So this is my hummingbird cake with cream cheese icing and toasted coconut. It's actually the first cake I baked when I started my business and that was the beginning of the Simon Loeg story. So we're going to start with turning our oven on to 180 degrees and greasing a 10 inch cake tin. Now it's just veggie oil. We don't like to use olive oil when we're doing sweeties because it's a little bit strong in flavour. Line the tin with greaseproof paper. One on the bottom and a piece around the outside. And then another brush of the oil. And this just stops the cake from sticking. And then we're going to take three Essington Park eggs. They're about 60 grams and 300 mils of vegetable oil. And two teaspoons of really great quality vanilla. And I'm just going to put my mixer down and just put it on in the on bottom speed. And then we can speed it up a little. Then in a separate bowl, 300 mils of plain flour. Some people skip this bit, but I never do because I think you get a better, lighter result. And then to help the cake rise, one teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of bicarb. Salt, very important. It really does bring out the flavor. The good stuff, two teaspoons of cinnamon. Then I've got 200 grams of sugar and I'm going to mix that in with the wet ingredients. I'm going to do that in two stages so that I make sure that it's combined really well. Just on low speed to start. We don't want the flour going everywhere. And then the second half. Now it's very important at this stage that you don't over mix the the mixture because when you're baking it will shrink um, and the crumb won't be as tender. Okay so now we add 300 grams of grated carrot, 280 grams which is a, a tin that you can buy in the grocery store of pineapple and this one's crushed. Then last but not least a cup of walnuts and I always as I always do roast and chop before I cook with them because the flavor and the crunch comes out and then give it all a good mix this part is important to sort of fold so you're not overworking and into our tin smooth it out a little a little tap and into the oven So the cake's been in the oven for 40 minutes and I'm just going to check that it's cooked. So I'm going to take this skewer, just insert and if it comes out nice and clean as it has, we're ready to make our icing. So I'm taking one cup of cream cheese. We're just going to get that going to start. And then we add half a cup of butter, two teaspoons of vanilla, and four cups of icing sugar. Just gradually, because we don't want the icing sugar to go everywhere. And the rest of the icing sugar. And I'm going to add half a lemon. And as always, whenever I use lemon, I like to use the zest as well, just for that extra piquancy. And the zest. And we can turn out and start to ice our cake. Perfect. 
just nice chunks. Just establish where the cheek is, so you're cutting on each side of the, the stone. I'm going to cut the cake in half, so I just slide my serrated knife into the cake and turn the cake stand around as I go. Then gently bring the top half onto your cutting board. And look how beautiful and moist that is. I can't wait to taste a piece. Okay, and now for our luscious and creamy cream cheese icing. A nice layer of fresh summery mango. And then on with our top layer. And now for the topping. I find it's best to use a spatula like this rather than a knife or any other implement because it's like concreting. Just make sure that you can't see any of the cake on the top. And then we're going to press this beautifully freshly toasted coconut into the sides. And now for the mango. And a little adornment. My hummingbird cake with fresh mango and toasted coconut. Oh, I do, I think I need to have a piece. Just for old time's sake. Mm. Just how I remember it, food from the heart.